Hi everyone, welcome to Econ 483. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the course organization. I'm going to talk about the grading, the workflow, the schedule, the software requirement, the technological requirements, and so on. First of all, a little bit about myself. So my name is Thomas Vigier. Um, I'm French. So the closest way to pronounce my name would be to say VGA, like those blue VGA cables you put into your computer when you want to project onto another screen, for instance. This is my email address. You can um, contact me anytime. I usually reply pretty fast. For this course, you are going to need Econ 333, Econ 333 as a prerequisite. In the first weeks, I will uh, go over the fundamentals of linear regression anyway, so that's going to be a good reminder. In this course, we'll talk about econometrics and machine learning, although one, we could say one is pretty much the same as the other. Is this course difficult? I would say not if you're up to date. We are going to cover a lot in the first half of the course. I'm going to um, talk about the schedule soon. A lot of this content is content you're going to need when you're going to have to read papers, make your own paper, and for the final exam. Do I recommend tutors? No. This course is not about solving exercises. Rather, it's about understanding the concepts, why they are used, what kind of problems they solve, and what kind of questions they answer. I will have office hours on a weekly basis, so I strongly encourage you to come to see me in office hours if you have any um, questions regarding the course. There are also very good resources, which I will talk about, four books in particular, but I really don't recommend you guys to um, hire tutors. So, the objective of the course is to teach econometric methods, their purpose, properties, implementation in R. Probably in your uh, previous classes, in particular in Econ 333, you have studied linear regressions, why we use them, what we do with them, what are the properties of linear regression, linear estimators, the OLS estimator in particular, and bias, consistent, you probably have uh, heard of those words. I'm going to um, go through that thing again, and I will talk about um, more refined or extensions of um, these models. The objective is also to understand how to use data to answer economic questions. Once we have data, what can we extract from them? There's a difference between correlation and causation. How do we figure out uh, one over the other? What kind of data do we need? And once we have the data, how do we handle them? Get introduced to the machine learning world and see how its methods are applied in economics. The applications of machine learning methods in economics are fairly recent, so I will talk about machine learning a bit later, probably around week five and six, because I need to introduce you to the econometrics background first. So I will go over the um, OLS estimator again, and so on and so forth. And from then, from there, we will um, go to machine learning, which is not more complicated. It's an extension of the econometrics you've seen before. Another objective is for you to get your hands on a statistical software. After all, you are probably close to graduate. And usually in the labor on the labor market, um, the knowledge of a at least one statistical software or language is one of the skills that are expected from an economics undergraduate um, student. Here is going to be R, but I will show you that R is, um, the syntax in R, the language, is fairly similar to other languages you might have to use um, in your work. I will maybe briefly um, get into Python and show you how the same commands can be, um, can be implemented in Python. And finally, um, we are going to get to start a paper of your own. 
The idea is that based on the knowledge you're going to learn in the course with all those different methods, you're going to have to come up with a question and you're going to have to come up with the method and estimator that will help you solve that question. Then you'll have to talk about the kind of data you need, get this data and um, get on with the paper. I will give you the details about the paper later in the semester. So how does the course workflow work? I will have weekly lectures which are uploaded on Canvas in the RMD format and the PDF format. The RMD format is the R markdown format. This is the format I use to make my slides in this course because they allow me to put some R code and some regular slides, um, slides content at the same time. Right now, the slides you see on the screen have been made with RStudio. But I will also post the lecture in the PDF format. I will show, I will upload both formats so that if you are interested in maybe writing the paper or making a presentation in um, in RMD, in the RMD format, then you can use my files as a template and you just replace my content by yours. Everything is going to happen on Zoom. So I encourage you to look at the Zoom section on Canvas to see the lecture, the lectures and office hours schedule. So I will give lectures live synchronously through Zoom. I will also record them at the same time, the same way I am recording this presentation right now. I will upload the lectures on Canvas right after the lecture, maybe a couple hours because it takes time to upload the video on YouTube. YouTube provides sub, um, subtitles and captions, so I hope that is going to make um, the lectures easier to understand. I know I have a strong accent. I'm trying my best to uh, speak English as um, as good as possible. Sometimes I speak fast and sometimes I could be tired so my accent takes over and it might be hard to understand what I say. Any update will happen on Canvas. I will make announcements on a regular basis about uh, next week or about a, uh, the papers or about the final, uh, the final exam and so on. I will post announcements on a regular basis so stay up to date. I suggest you turn on your um, Canvas notifications. Tests, well, there'll be um, one here, the final exam, will happen on Crowdmark. Crowdmark is a platform. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it already uh, from other courses. It's a platform that allows you to um, look at the exam, write your own answers on a piece of paper, take a picture and upload them on the platform. This is pretty much the same as Canvas. However, Canvas has a hard time dealing with multiple submissions at the same time. Some submissions sometimes fail and I had students come to me a day after the exam telling me, oh, I, I got a zero, what's going on? And I said, well, you didn't submit anything. And this person said, yeah, I did, but I don't know, there was a problem. That's also one of the reasons you're gonna need a decent internet connection. Attendance to lectures is not mandatory. You don't have to especially because the recordings are going to be uploaded on uh, Canvas and YouTube within a day after the lecture. On presentation day, presentation days, and I will announce the schedule, you will be required to attend, okay? Whether you present or not, in fact. I require you, all of you to attend those presentations because I, I believe you need to observe your um, your fellow classmates, see what is good about the presentation, see what is bad, take the good and improve the bad for your own. There are no tutorials in this course because it's a seminar course. The grading scheme. In this um, course, you will have to present a paper. I will post the papers online and I will assign a paper to each of you randomly. That will represent 50%, 15% of the final grade. Then I will um, require you to also discuss another student's presentation. I will give you the details. That might be reviewing their presentation of a paper. 
or they might be reviewing their presentation of their own paper with maybe you can give them suggestions about how they can improve. I will give you more precisions regarding that matter. The final exam is going to account for 40% of the final grade. So in the final exam, I will ask you questions about all the methods seen in class. I might ask you questions about the papers that have been presented by you or by other students and so on. There's a final paper that represents 30% of the final grade. And as well, I will give you the details about the formatting of the paper and so on later. Finally, I will follow the SFU Econ undergraduate guidelines. This is a link that takes you to the SFU website where you can see a um, guidelines for grade distributions. Quick word about cheating. Cheating is unacceptable in any form and will be heavily punished, especially since classes are taught remotely. We are being extra careful about cheating behaviors. The consequences at the university level can be big. Immediate fail in the course, that's an automatic fail. That's for sure what I'm going to do. And sometimes you could be expelled from the university because once cheating behaviors have been detected, then as instructors, we need to take it um, to the higher ups at the university level. We need to file a report and the university can also take an additional, um, additional decisions. The procedure is fairly simple. It takes five minutes to fill. I have gone through it before in the past semesters and it's very straightforward. This is one of the reasons I strongly advise against any cheating attempt. This is one of your last courses before you graduate. It's going to be an extremely useful course. You're going to learn a lot of things which are going to be useful and valuable on the labor market. The skills you're going to learn in this course are going to be highly valued. They're going to give you bargaining power at a job interview, and they will definitely give you solid foundations for a successful career. Even if you don't plan to do any data work in the future, having this knowledge will help you to understand at least people who work with you and who are in charge of the data and so on and so forth. So I strongly advise against any cheating attempt. Quick word on the technology requirements. You will need a camera for the tests and presentations. I will ask you to put your camera on during presentations and tests. If you attend lectures but don't want to turn your camera on, no problem, you don't need to. You will need a picture taking device to submit your work on Crowdmark for the final exam. So during the exam, you'll have to take pictures on a regular basis. You might use your phone to already film your workspace, but every now and then you can take your phone, take a picture and so on. I will give you more details about that. You will need a decent internet connection for presentations and final exam. That is very important. In terms of software, we will need three of them. Zoom for lectures, presentations and office hours. Crowdmark for tests. You have received an invitation through Canvas already. I will make a fake quiz uh, sometimes next week or in two weeks so that you can get familiar with the platform, see how it works, see how to take a picture and so on and upload. And finally, you're going to need RStudio. In fact, RStudio is the interface to use R and compile code. R is the original software you're going to need. So you're going to need to download two software. R alone is going to give you the base. But since the interface given by R is not really friendly, doesn't, very, doesn't look very good, kind of not very interesting to use. RStudio provides a very good interface with graphs on one, on one side, one panel, variables in another, uh, code in another, and the results in a fourth panel. So I suggest you to download both um, right away. We're going to use them for data analysis, regressions, machine learning algorithms, and so on. In this course, every lecture, every time I talk about a method, I will show you how it illustrates in R. So 
I will provide you a lot of code in this course. I will make one full lecture of three hours on R, on an introduction to R. Uh, that's going to be sometime on the fifth or the sixth week of um, the semester. Um, so hopefully you'll have enough code to handle your own paper. Finally, is this class useful? Yes, very useful. In fact, it's going to be one of the most useful courses in your degree. I believe personally that Econ 333 is the most useful course in the degree because you learn how to handle data, which is something that you will be asked to do probably more than 70 with a more than 70 percent um, probability. I would say that in at least 75 percent of jobs um, that require an economist, there is going to be in one way or another some data analysis. Machine learning is very trendy, so I think it's always good to uh, know a bit about what's going on. It crosses disciplines frontiers. It's being used in medicine more and more. It's being used in um, security in general for facial recognition. It's being used for speech recognition um, and more generally um, in statistics. Any modern day economist is asked to know about data manipulation, data analysis tools, regression methods. Firms like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Spotify, WeWork, Wayfair, I asked all those firms. I went to a conference two years ago and most actually most people that were at the conference were people from Amazon recruiting um, graduate students in economics. And they told us what, um, what tools we should learn, what we should focus on in our degree and what kind of tools they will need us to master. I met people from Amazon, Google, Facebook. I met somebody from Spotify who was making some tests on the um, on the website using some data. Um, WeWork. I had a, a job interview with WeWork. Wave. I had knew somebody who had an interview with Wayfair, and they all re asked. They all gave um, cases to solve. They all said, "Oh, assume we have this kind of data, and we want to solve this kind of question. How would you do it?" And after all, don't you want to know what firms do with your data? Think about the YouTube algorithm. Think about what Twitter does with all of your data. Think about what Facebook does with all of your data to suggest you ads. Well, in this course, we'll open the black box. Machine learning methods are, in general, black boxes. They are kind of magic tricks. You can know the basic idea, and then the software is going to run a big loop for you. Hopefully, in this course, I will teach you um, about what's inside the box, what's going on, what are the computations that the computer is actually performing. Finally, uh, four uh, books that are going to be very useful. They are all free and available online. And in fact, you can see here that all those things are links. So you can just click on them and you can download the books. Causal Inference, the mixtape, is a book by Scott Cunningham. It's available for free online, so there's no paper version, but the book is free online, labeled by chapters, with a bunch of R code for you to um, get some support. The book mostly covers causal inference methods, so I will use this book as my reference once I get into causal inference methods. I will also use mostly harmless econometrics, which is a book by Engrist and, and uh, Pischke. Um, it's mostly about causal inference as well, although it covers more general regression methods. It is available for free on the SFU library website. ISLR, or Introduction to Statistical Learning with Application in R, is a great book written by Gareth James, Daniela Witten, Trevor Hasty, and Rob Tipshirani. It's available for free online, and there is a uh, paper version as well. In fact, there it is. It's a great book that covers regression techniques in general, but in particular has probably half of the book, maybe even more, about machine learning. 
The machine learning algorithms they cover are fairly general. They explain to you, they explain the, um, the general principle of um, random forests, regression trees, support vector machines, and so on. That will be my main reference when it comes to talk about econometrics. I will use, I think most of the time, I will use notation, mathematical notation from that book. Finally, the last book is a book which is available online as well. R for Data Science, which, is, which has been written by Hadley Wickham. It's a great resource to learn how to use R. Hadley Wickham is an R wizard. He has done many books about different parts of R. He has a whole book about how to use um, plotting, uh, plotting commands, how to personalize plots. He made R for Data Science, which is a book about introduction to R, how to work with R, and in particular, he um, describes how to use R with uh, how to analyze data with a package that he wrote. So he wrote his own code, uploaded it online, and it's incredibly user-friendly and looks very good. In fact, if you go to the website and look at the book itself, R for Data Science, you can go through chapters and so on. The website you see has been made in R. The same way the slides I'm presenting right now have been made in R. So R allows you to actually um, process data, do very difficult computations, a lot of programming. It allows you to send emails, in fact. You can send emails to yourself in R. You can make your resume in R. You can make slides like this one in R. You can write papers in R. Or you can write books. So R is very versatile and it keeps uh, new tools keep being developed on a daily basis. R is free. You can make your own code and upload it online. It's a great way to contribute to the community if it's a code that doesn't exist out there and that is a good contribution in one way or another. So I suggest you to um, download those books right away. They're going to be useful for after you graduate, whenever you need to handle data or regression techniques. Those are very good references. In the lectures, I will on a regular basis refer the content I teach to different chapters of these books. So you can always look at the lecture notes before my lecture, see what chapter of which book it corresponds to, and maybe uh, read the chapter ahead of the lecture to know what I'm going to talk about. That's it for this um, short introduction to the course. We are going to meet on uh, May 17th for the first lecture. In the meantime, take care. I will uh, post announcements on Canvas on a regular basis, so please check them out. Have a good rest of your week and see you in the next one. Bye.